All right, so here is the test review. Uh, so this one says to solve the equations that we're gonna do so by factoring. All right, so it's already in standard form. It's set equal to zero. Um, there is no greatest common factor. Um, it's not a special case. So we're gonna go to the X method. So B is on top. We divide by A in this case is one. We multiply A times C, which is negative six. And the two numbers that add to one but multiply to negative six are gonna be three minus two, so that's gonna be x plus three. x minus two is equal to zero. Then we're gonna set each one equal to zero. And then we're gonna solve. So x is equal to negative three when we subtract three, and x is equal to positive two when we add two. All right, for the next one, uh, same thing. It's in standard form, set equal to zero, no GCF. Um, not a special case, so we go to the X method, or whichever method you prefer to do. A times C, so that's gonna be five minus two adds to three, so five minus two is three, and five times negative two is negative 10. So five divided by one is five, so that's X plus five, and then X minus two, and we set each one equal to zero. And then we solve, so x is equal to negative five when we subtract five, and x is equal to positive two when we add two. All right, for the next one, um, again, um, we're going to make sure it's standard form, set equal to zero. There is no GCF, but this is a special case. This is a perfect square, and so is this. So we do the square root of that is x. The square root of this is two, and we verify that it does work. So x times two is two x. If we double 2x, we do get 4x, so we use the middle symbol, parentheses, and square. And when we're solving this, we just set 1 equal to 0, and x equals 2 when you add the 2 over. All right, on to numbers uh, 4, 5, and 6. So here we want to make sure first it's in standard form, set equal to 0. So right here we see 9x and negative 8 need to be moved over. So I'm going to subtract 9x, and I'm going to add the 8. And so now it's standard form, no GCF, not a special case. So we go to the X method, B on the top, divide by A, and we multiply A times C, so one times eight is eight. So my factors are negative eight and negative one. So X minus eight and X minus one. And here I'm just gonna go straight to the answers now. Add the eight, X equals eight, add the one, X equals one. So these are my two answers. All right, for the next one, x squared minus 36, this is another special case, so perfect square, perfect square. So this is called a difference of two squares. The square root of this is x, the square root of this is six. And so there's only two terms, one's positive and one's negative. Then you set each one equal to zero, so x is equal to negative six and x is equal to positive six, right? So you set this equal to zero, subtract the six, negative six, set this equal to zero, add the six, positive six. All right, and the last one right here. Um, again, it does not equal zero, so we're gonna add the 10 over. Mm, positive six. So standard form set equal to zero. No GCF, not a special case. Now we go to the X method. Negative seven, divide by A, which is one, and then A times C, which is six. So negative six minus one is negative seven. Negative six times negative one is six. So we have x minus 6 and x minus 1. This one I'll show you again just in case you've forgotten. Set each one equal to 0. Add the 6. x equals 6. Add the 1. x equals 1. All right, let's take a look at these. Uh, finding the zeros is the same thing as solving. So this right here, find the zeros, that means to solve. Okay, so let's first set this equal to 0. Let's go ahead and do the x method. So negative 12 divided by a, which is one, and then a times c, which is 32. My factors that add to negative 32 and multiply 32 are gonna be negative eight and negative four. So x minus eight and x minus four. Set each one equal to zero, x equals eight, x equals four. For the next one, uh, again, set it equal to zero. Um, here, it is in standard form, it's set equal to zero. There actually is a GCF. These both are divisible by X. 
So x squared divided by x is x, negative 6x divided by x is negative 6, and now it's factored. So when we set each of these equal to 0, the first one is solved. But the second one, when you set equal to 0, you have to add the 6. So x equals 6. All right, number 9 and 10 are word problems. So it says you are making a square frame of uniform width for a square picture that has side lengths of 2 feet. The total area of just the wood used in the frame is 5 square feet. What is the length of the sides of the frame? So here it appears we have two squares. So the area of the whole thing is x times x minus the area of the inside, which is 2 times 2. And it says the total area of just the wood, right? So this is the area of the whole thing minus the inside area would be the area of the wood, which is just 5 square feet. So x times x is x squared minus 2 times 2 is 4 equals to 5. We know in order to solve this, it has to equal 0. So we're going to go ahead and subtract the 5 over. And standard form, no GCF, but it is a special case. Perfect square, perfect square. I think we just did one similar to this right here, number 5. So we know to take the square root of this, which is x. Square root of this, which is 3. Write that twice. First one's positive, second one's negative. Now when we go to solve this, x plus 3 is equal to 0, and x minus 3 is equal to 0. We're going to get two answers, but the negative answer does not exist because you can't have negative length on a, or width on a side. So we have x is equal to 3 feet. All right, uh, number 10, the concert one, it says the dimensions of the old stage at the concert hall were 30 feet wide by 15 feet deep. Okay, so 30 feet by 15 feet. The new stage has a total area of 1,000 square feet. The dimensions of the new stage were created by adding the same distance x to the width and depth of the old thing. Okay, so you're just adding x to each side. So we have 30 plus x times 15 plus x equals the new total area of 1,000 square feet. So I'm just going to foil this out. 30 times 15 is 450. 30 times x is 30x. x times 15 is 15x. And x times x is x squared. I'm going to rewrite this in order. x squared. 30x plus 15x is 45x plus 450 equals to 1,000. Let's go ahead and subtract 1,000 over. So we get x squared plus 45x minus, so 450 minus 1,000 is negative 550. Let's go ahead and do the x method. Uh, so a, uh, b is 45, divided by a is 1, and then negative 550 times 1 is negative 550. This is um, 55 minus 10. 55 minus 10 is 45. 55 times Negative 10 is negative 550, so that's good. So we have x plus 55, x minus 10. So x equals negative 55, and x is equal to 10. <clears throat> so what is the value of x? It looks like they added 10 feet to each side. All right, on to the back. Uh, so this is factoring, and it looks like your a value is no longer 1. So let's take a look at these real quick here. Um, so the first one, it just says, oops. Oh, that's just there. It says to factor the expression fully. It does not say to solve, right? And really quickly, if it said to solve, we would be able to see like equals zero or something. But the directions don't say, it just says to factor. Okay, so for this one here, um, first off, it is in standard form. There is no GCF. It is not a special case because that's not a perfect square, neither is that. So we go to the X method. <coughs> so B is 10, A is 3. And on the bottom, we always multiply A times c. My two factors that add to 10 but multiply to negative 24 are going to be 12 minus 2. Now here you do have to be careful and remember you need to reduce, right? 12 divided by 3 is positive 4 and negative 2 thirds cannot reduce. So this 4 becomes x plus 4 and negative 2 thirds we bring the 3 in front of the x so it becomes 3x minus 2. All right, for the next one, it's in standard form. There is a GCF. They're both divisible by 2. So 2 goes into 18 9 times, and 2 goes into 2 once. And here we do have one of those special cases. Perfect square, perfect square. So the square root of 9x squared is 3x. The square root of 1 is 1. And since it's a difference, plus and minus. 
for the next one. It says 12x squared minus 39x plus 9. So it is in standard form. There is a GCF. Um, the GCF appears to be, I would say it's 3. So we're going to factor out a 3. So divide each one of these by 3. So 4x squared minus, uh, what is that, 13x plus 3. All right. Now we'll go into the x method because uh, it's not a special case. So negative 13 on the top, divide by a, a is 4. And then a times c is 12. So my factor is going to be negative 12 minus 1 is negative 13, and negative 12 times negative 1 is positive 12. Negative 12 over 3 reduces to negative 3. So when we're factoring this, don't forget your GCF at the very beginning. Then we have x minus 3 times the 4 and negative 1 does not reduce, so we bring the 4 in front of the x, so 4x minus 1. Alright, on to number 14. So we notice, first off, standard form, no GCF. It is a special case. This is a perfect square, and so is this. So we take the square root of that, which is 3x. We take the square root of the last term, which is 2. Now, since there's three terms, we're going to multiply these two together. So 3x times 2 is 6x. Then we're going to double it, and it is 12x. So we put the middle, sim middle symbol in the middle, parentheses, and square root. All right, let's take a look at numbers 15. It says rewrite the following in intercept form. It says nothing about solving it, so we're just factoring again. Uh, um, here, first off, it's in standard form. There is no GCF. It is a special case. Perfect square, perfect square, and there's a minus sign. So the square root of 9x squared is 3x. Square root of 4 is 2. We're going to write it twice since there's a minus sign. There's only two terms. First one positive, second one negative. All right, for number 16, standard form, no GCF, not a perfect case. So now we go into uh, the X method. Negative 6 on the top, divide by A, which is 8, and then 8 times 1 is 8. My two numbers that add to negative 6 and multiply it back to 8 are going to be negative 4 and negative 2. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. We're going to reduce this. These both reduce by 4, so negative 1 half. This both reduce by 2, so negative 1 fourth. No GCF, so this would be 2x minus 1 and 4x minus 1. All right, on to the next one. Here uh, we have 18x squared plus 48x. So first off, it is in standard form. Second question, there is a GCF. Um, 18 and 48 are both divisible by 6 and x. So I divide this by 6x and this by 6x. So we get uh, 3x and then this would become positive 8. So 6x and yeah that's it. Let me just write a little bit nicer. There is nothing else to factor, right? So when we did the GCF here it automatically factored for us and we're done. All right, let's move on to the next ones. Uh, these ones do say to solve, so we're going to factor it, and then we're going to solve it. Um, just like before, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that it does equal to 0. So 9x squared is fine. Uh, we need to add this 10x over here, which gives us 21x. We need to subtract this 8, which gives us positive 10. And we set that equal to 0. Now from here, it's standard form. No greatest common factor. Not a special case. So we go to the x method. Um, so we have 21 on the top, we're dividing by a, which is 9, and then 9 times 10 is 90. So my factors here are going to be hmm, 6 times 15. 6 plus 15 is 21, 6 times 15 is 90. So now we're going to reduce, 6 over 9 reduces to 2 thirds, 15 over 9 reduces to 5 thirds, okay? So this becomes 3x plus 2 when we swing the 3 in front of the x. And this one becomes 3x plus 5. Set it equal to 0. Now you need to set each one equal to 0 and solve. This one I'm going to do in my head. So subtract the 2, divide by 3. Again, set equal to 0, subtract the 5, divide by 3. And these are my two solutions. All right, for the next one, again, so this time we're going to add the 3x squared over, giving us 8x squared. We're going to subtract the 6x, which gives us negative 8x, and then minus 6 equals 0. Okay, so it is in standard form. This time there is a GCF. They're all divisible by 2. So 4x squared minus 4x minus 3. 
uh, not a special case. So we go to the x method. Negative 4. A is 4. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So we have 6 and 2, and the 6 will be negative. This reduces to 1 half. Uh, negative 6 and 4 are both divisible by 2, which results in negative 3 halves. All right, so let's write our factored form. So don't forget your GCF, which is 2. Uh, 2x minus 3 and 2x plus 1. Again, we can only set factors equal to 0 that have an x. So in this case, this 2 right here does not have an x, so there's no solution to it. But 2x minus 3, when you set that equal to 0, you add the 3 divided by 2. 2x plus 1, subtract the 1, divide by 2. And those are your solutions. All right, number 20. Uh, let's go ahead and add the 2x squared. 7x squared. Let's go ahead and subtract the 3, which gives us 0. Here, standard form, uh, there is a GCF. They're both divisible by x. So 7x squared divided by x is 7x. Negative 3x divided by x is negative 3. Here, I will set each one equal to 0. So x equals 0 is one solution. Add the 3, divide by 7. x equals 3 sevenths. All right, now we're down to our last problem. So our last problem says... Um, uh, area of the rectangle is 22, so find the value of x. Okay, so this is a rectangle, and we know to find the area, it's length times width. So area equals length times width. So 3x plus 1 times 2x plus 1, and the total area is 22. So we have 6x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 1. So 6x squared plus 5x plus 1 is equal to 22. We know in order to solve it, it does have to equal 0. So I'm going to subtract the 21 over. Then I'm going to go into the x method. So we have 5 at the top, divide by a, which is 6. And then 6 times negative 21 is negative 126. My factors here are going to be 14 and 9. And we're going to subtract the 9. So 14 over 6 reduces to 7 thirds, right? Uh, 2 goes into 14 7 times, 2 goes to 6 3 times. Over here, they're both divisible by 3, so negative 3 over 2. Let's rewrite this in factor form first. And when we solve each of these, x equals negative 7 thirds, subtract 7 divided by 3, x equals add the 3, divide by 2. So when we're dealing with the length, we can't have negative length or width, so the one that's going to result in positive length and width is x is equal to 3 halves. And there you go.